What's the best handheld radio for a new ham? We'll review the five best options coming up. KN4 NEH, this is Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep. One of the top questions we see online is, I'm a new ham, what radio should I buy? The answer really depends on what part of the hobby you're going to explore. But you can't go wrong with having a good handheld, also known as an HT, in your toolkit. The whole team at Ham Radio Prep took a look at all the major handheld options today and came up with the five best options out there, considering price, functionality, modes of operation, and things like community support. We have not been compensated or sponsored by any of these brands. These are just our honest reviews of our favorite five radios. So let's jump in with a good low priced option. The Baofeng BF F8HP is the first entry on our list. It's a great affordable entry level option, selling online for around $70. There are lower price radios on the market, but this made our pick due to a higher eight watt power output instead of the typical five watts and a bigger battery capacity than the others. This radio allows you to transmit on two meters and 70 centimeter bands and has some additional receive only bandwidth so you can hear FM broadcast, the weather service and GMRS while scanning. With this radio, you can expect to work simplex contacts in the five mile range and hit local repeaters in town to give your signal even longer reach. It's a good choice to add a programming cable as well. It's so much easier to program the memories on a computer than on the front panel. But the keypad is helpful for dialing in simplex frequencies or sending DTMF to repeaters, activating Echolink or IRLP functions. Because of their price points, the Baofangs are very popular ham radios, and it's hard to go wrong here. Even experienced hams often have one lying around in their truck or part of a go kit. If you need to learn how to use your Baofang, check out the Ham Radio Prep Baofang Basics course. A link is in the description. If you're looking for a handheld radio that's a little more rugged, we continue to like the Yaesu FT65. For around $120, you get a lot of similar features to the Baofang, like two meter and 70 centimeter operation with monitoring options. But in a case and experience that's a little more hardened. Yezu radios are well supported from our experience and have a few more accessory options. The FT65 is one of only two radios on our list that has a single VFO, meaning you can only listen to one frequency at a time unless you're scanning. That's a good trade-off for ease of use and durability you may find important in a handheld. Like the Baofeng, we recommend picking up a programming cable to enter your repeater memories. While we recommend starting your operating experience with analog, lots of hams want to go buy a radio that will grow with them. So we'll give our picks for a top radio in each of the three most popular digital formats. We'll touch on Fusion and DMR shortly, but let's start with D-Star and the ICOM ID52. ICOM has been focused on D-Star for more than a decade, and they continue to build out their radios as features become available. The ID52 is loaded with options, and you can find them on sale for less than $600. It compares well with the Baofeng and Yezu in analog features. It also adds a broader receiver range, bringing in the civil aviation band and some Milcom aviation frequencies. It focuses its transmit on two meter and 70 centimeter, which are the most popular frequencies for D-Star repeaters. To get started on D-Star, the radio features something called DR mode. This feature lets you download a GPS searchable list of repeaters into your radio, which is separate from its 1000 memory slots. With DR mode, you can select a repeater from the list or choose near repeater to pick the closest options. The DR mode works on both FM and D-Star repeaters, making it a dream to program. The ID52 has a broad set of features you would expect from a more expensive handheld, including a nice big color screen, Bluetooth functions that add the ability to import and transmit photos over D-Star, onboard recording of your transmissions, 
and it's all programmed with a standard micro USB cable to a switchable micro SD card memory. ICOM offers plenty of accessories as well. This top of the line D-Star radio would make an excellent choice if that digital mode is where you want to focus. Our honorable mention here is the Kenwood THD74A. It's gone out of production, but you can still find it on the auction sites. It's the only radio we know that does D-Star with DR mode and APRS in one rig. It also has coverage on the 1.25 meter handband. Let's switch from D-Star to DMR and look at the Anytone AT D878UVII+. Plus, our team agrees that going from zero to DMR is probably the most complicated path in terms of programming your radio and getting started on digital. But this radio has our choice because it has broad support. For about $320, you can pick up the basic radio, which includes a 7-watt transmitter on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. It has a big color screen, built-in GPS, and is another on our list that does APRS. The ones we've seen come with a programming cable in the box, and this odd push-to-talk wristband, which seems to be more of a throw-in. The Anytone is one of the largest memories, with 4,000 channels, which is great when traveling. It does not have the receive bandwidth of FM broadcast and airband like a couple of the other radios we've discussed, but it's a solid, well-built rig with accessory options because it's cross-compatible with Kenwood style accessories. Getting started on DMR is a whole other series of videos, so we won't cover that here. But to do that, you'll need something called a code plug that contains the right memory configurations. For our system fusion option of digital radio, we have two choices, the FT70DR or the FT5DR. We like the FT70 because it's great price point for a digital radio, around $200, and it's no-nonsense approach. It's a single VFO with an LCD screen that can receive from 108 MHz airband all the way up to 580 MHz in the public service band. The multicolored LED shows if you're in analog or digital mode at a glance and has more than 1,000 memory channels. The FT70's more full-featured big brother is the new FT5DR. It sells for a little less than $500, but that's a little misleading because it requires a programming cable for any serious setup, and that's an add-on which you don't have to worry about if you pick our D-Star or DMR choices. Once you get going, the C4FM mode, also known as Fusion, seems to be easier to get started with than DMR since it's more repeater dependent. The FT5DR has a big touchscreen, wideband receiver, and the accessories we expect, like spare batteries. It also has swappable micro SD memory. Ultimately, the choice in digital boils down to availability. According to a November 22 check of repeaterbook.com in North America, there are more than 2,100 DMR repeaters, about 1,200 D-Star options, and around 2,300 Fusion repeaters. That said, we recommend checking two things before going all in on a digital format. First, look at what's in your neighborhood. The easiest digital format to get started on is what's on the repeater up the street. You can usually find a local club to help you with questions when you get started. So, check repeaters in your area and find out if DMR, D-Star, or Fusion is more popular if you want to go digital. Second, if you're going to work with a group, know their preferred digital format. Here's an example. Aries in Georgia is focused on a statewide D-Star network, and D-Star is not cross-compatible with Fusion or DMR. The point here is there's no standard for what different formats local clubs and groups like Aries around the country use. Talk with them locally before you invest a lot of money into a radio if your plan is to join up and support them. Whichever handheld you choose, or if you choose another not on our list, still expect a learning curve on getting the radio programmed for the first time. This will take you back to a world of choosing COM ports on your computer or swapping out memory cards. Again, check your local club for repeater memories or code plug files. A lot of hams are willing to share. If you like the idea of having a handheld ham radio, but haven't gotten your license yet, you can get started at hamradioprep.com. Our 10 lesson technician course has videos, 
quizzes, and games to teach you everything you need to pass the FCC exam on the first try. Visit us at hamradioprep.com to find out more and get started today. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim, N4BFR. For all of us at Ham Radio Prep, we hope to hear you on the air soon. Maybe on that new handheld.